Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an actual CPA simulation. Why do I say actual? Because this simulation was released by the AICPA. AICPA is the organization that administered the CPA exam. So we are dealing with the real deal here. This simulation is for auditing and attestation. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus, actually 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lecture. This is a list of all the courses that I covered including CPA, as well as a complete auditing and attestation course in case you are studying for your CPA exam. On my website, you will find additional resources such as notes, PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice. If you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the simulation so we can work it together. So this is what the simulation would look like. You want to make sure you're comfortable with all the features. For example, if you're going to put, pull a calculator or the Excel sheet in case you need to work with this. So basically, um, this is an example. And here we're going to be dealing with inventory. And here's what I need to tell you about about uh, about simulations. I, told, I tell you this in every recording, but I have to remind you because you, this maybe this is the first time you're, you are listening to me. Simulation is no more than an exercise, an exercise from your college textbook. And most of the time, it covers one topic. So simply put, they want to know if you know something about this topic. So rather than they rather than giving you multiple choice where you can guess the answer or answer it correctly by mistake, they give you a simulation to test your knowledge. And this is where your actual knowledge is actually tested. Okay, so that's what a simulation is. What does that mean to you? It means you have to understand the topics. What does that mean to you? How can I help you? Well, I do have I do have lessons about all auditing. So if you want to learn, master the topic, go to my website and start there. So let's take a look at this question. So we are giving a few exhibits. We'll look at them, but let's first look at this. See what we are what we are giving. Okay. Green CPA is completing audit procedure for December 31st year four audit of JBU company a non issue. It's a private company. An auditor from Green attended the physical inventory observation at year end. JBU maintain a perpetual inventory system that's integrated with the general ledger. The auditor noted that some issues that require further investigation while reviewing the inventory count sheet and the warehouse location maps. So I guess the maps have a role in here. The auditor established the following information relating to the inventory count and product lines of JBU. There were no product movement on the day of the count. The loading dock is part of the of warehouse A for the purpose of the count. All product lines within each storage area have been identified on the warehouse maps. The warehouse map is reflective of the warehouse on the day of the count. Inventory values in the perpetual inventory listing are based on the most recent purchase price. Materiality for year-end audit is 5,000. Performance materiality is 5,000. There's a lot of information here. Just make sure you scan it, scan through it. You can go back and look at the details. Complete the inventory tasks below by using the information provided in the exhibit above. So we're going to have to examine the exhibit. Okay, so let's take a look at what they're asking us first. In column B, quantify the required adjustment, if any, to the product line and the perpetual inventory system. So in this column B, we have to put a number, the adjustment. Okay, enter increase in the perpetual inventory as positive whole dollars. So in case it was a, an increase, enter it as a positive. Enter a decrease in, to the perpetual inventory system as negative. So if you need to reduce inventory, ent enter the number as negative. So you have to be careful. If no adjustment, if everything looks good, the count matches the record, enter zero and make sure to enter zero. In column C, select the justification for the required audit adjustment or the reason why no audit adjustment is required by selecting the option listed provided. Oh, great. So they're basically, they've given us a bunch of options why something is wrong. Okay. A justification can be used more than once, more than once or not. Uh, justification can be, used, can be used once, more than once or not at all. Assume there is only one reason for each product discrepancy. So only one product discrepancy. And basically, we have three products that they want us to look at. The widgets, 10 millimeter, the widgets, 5 millimeter, and the hex bolt. Actually, funny is because I do, when I did audit, when I was in practice, I did audit 
company similar to this one in a sense that they have all these uh, all these tools and and items so that's that's interesting that's bringing back memories it doesn't matter so now we're gonna what you would do next now you kind of you kind of know what you're looking for you're looking to adjust inventory okay no, only for three product what you should do just go through real quick look at the exhibit so email from the controller and make sure you read them just at least if not the first time in detail but uh, uh, make sure you you you, uh, you look at the date this is the first email year five after the year end of the audit because we're, do we're doing year four returns hi can you please tell me whether the items in the return area have been included in the count controller yes the counts are correct and returns have been included in the count however they would not have been yet processed in the perpetual inventory so they did count them but they're not been processed in the perpetual inventory we don't know anything yet but uh, but we'll, we might need this information later. The auditor, please see my response to your question in line below. Also, it should be noted that on closer look, there's an issue with the physical count of the five millimeter widget. The perpetual record are correct. This has been validated by an associate, by the associate Lily. So there's something to do with the five millimeter widget, which is we know we have to look at. Lastly, it looks like the perpetual inventory listing items include 750 of SQU271 that has been that has been co-signed so we you know there's some information about this product squ27-1 that's fine this is the first email that's good enough so we can close it we can close this email let's look at the second exhibit inventory count sheet so this is the actual count excellent so this is what what we counted in inventory a the sq sku and the uh, the inventory count we're going to come back to that no more than the count here this is what the actual count was the supplier report let's look at the supplier report here we have information about squ 67-3 67-5 67-167-4 67 what i suggest at this point don't read those because there's four product here and there's only three issues to deal with so don't waste your time yet on this you'll come back to this so close it for now perpetual inventory listing and you look at the perpetual inventory listing so this is what the system is showing this is the perpetual inventory listing so we're going to be dealing with the uh, hex bolts we're going to be dealing with the widget uh, 15 millimeter and the widget 5 millimeter what you would do now is i'm sorry the widget 9 millimeter 9 mil i'm sorry nine, not 9 10 millimeter uh the hex bolt and i don't know what's the third one here what you would need to do this is where you get the s SQ for each number, the SQ, the SQ for each number, the SQ. Okay, so let's close this, and this is the warehouse map because they talked about the map. Just scan the map here real quick. They talked about the return areas. There's hex bolts in the return area five six dash three. Okay, so kind of we got an idea what we are giving. So you basically scan through this. Now you're gonna go down here and start to focus. Now, the widget ten millimeter. Now what do we need to do? Well. The widget 10 millimeter, what you would do first is look at the perpetual inventory, see what the perpetual inventory says. What, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start there. If I look at the perpetual inventory, because you need to get the SKU number for this anyway. So the 10 millimeter, the SKU is 267-1. So this is the SKU, and the count is what we said, uh, item count is 1,000 unit. Now we know that there's some information about this 267, okay? So this is what we are saying now, the inventory valued at 4,990, okay? If you wanna write this down somewhere on a piece of paper, you write it down on a piece of paper, 1,000 unit, and we have them four, 499, which is 4,990, and the SKU number is 267-1, okay? This is good enough, let's close this. Let me look at the count real quick, see what did they count for this. So let's look at the inventory count sheet. The inventory count sheet for SKU 26-2, 267-1. So we have 131, just kind of 131 for the count in warehouse A and 119 in warehouse B plus 119 it seems we have 250 that's good so the count is 250 um also the record is showing 1000 now remember when we, when we started this process there was something about this product it looks like the perpetual listing include 750 that has been co-signed so notice here so the reason we only have 250 
okay, is because 750 are cosigned. Okay, so 750 are cosigned. All right, let's see if we can find more information about this product. Okay, so that's why we only found 250, although the record showing is, uh, is 750. So let's look at the supplier report and see if there's anything about, and there is something about SKU 267-1. What does it read? In March 4th, um, in March 4th, uh, we purchased 5,000 unit of this product. Half of the unit were sold. So if half of were sold, that's 2,500. 30% um, of the unit were sold to a third party. So simply simply put, 50 plus 30, 80%. So 80% of $5,000, if you don't know this, it's $4,000. But real quick, simply put, so here they made it easy for you. You don't, even, you don't have to use a calculator, but let me show you what happened. We, have five, we bought 5,000 of those. Um, 50 and 30, 80, so 0.8 are gone. What we're left with is 0.2 times 0.2, which is 1,000. So we still we should still have 1,000, which is this is what we thought we had. This is what the record is showing. So a further 30 of the unit were sold to third party during year four. 5% were in ending inventory, and the remaining 15 of the unit were provided to a customer on consignment. Those are the 750. As of December 31st, year four, all of the consigned goods were sold by the customer. Excellent. So guess what? Those 750 that they are still in our record, they are sold. Guess what? So the only thing that we have left is the actual 250. So the count is good. All that we have to do is reduce this number. Let me go back here. All that we have to do now is go back to the perpetual inventory listing, and this is incorrect. What's incorrect here? is we have 1,000, they should only be 250. I mean, this was correct. The only thing we did not take into account that the 750 that were consigned were sold. Now, if they were not sold, this would have been no change whatsoever. Now we know we have to reduce this by 750 units, 750 units. What does that mean? Well, let's look at the price one more time. That's 750 unit at 499. So I, you know, now you're gonna say, okay, what's my adjustment? Well. Let me make this smaller so we can see everything on the same screen here. You get your calculator. I have to reduce, clear the tape. We're going to take uh, 750 unit times 4.99. And we have to reduce our inventory by 3,700 uh, round up to 43. Okay, so we have to reduce it. Why? Because they are sold. Excellent news. We like this. They were sold. Remember, reduction are negative. So you're going to make sure you put it in parentheses or negative 3743. 37, so simply put, all the information is given. You just had to read, see what's going on. Now we have to choose why. Well, item damage item not removed. No error in the count. There was no error in the count. Item consigned to the company. Well, yes. Item consigned to the customer were sold. This is the right answer. So just be careful. Read them all to find the exact one. This is what you would select. Item consigned to the customer were sold. If they were sold, then you have to remove them from inventory. Because if they were not sold, you would keep them. Because although they're not at your place of business, they are co-signed to someone else. They're still your inventory. We're done with this one. Let's take a look at widget uh, widget 5 millimeter. What I would, I would start... What I would start with is the perpetual inventory count. And just to get this this Q number as well, the five millimeter, our record shows we should have 4102. So just copy this number down, 4102. And the skew number is 267-4. All right, 267-4. Let's see what the count showed. Uh, inventory count, 267-4. Uh, let me take a look at this here, 267-4. I have uh, 4,098. The count shows 4,098. So when I counted them, there was 4,098. My record shows I have 4,102, okay? There's, there's nothing in warehouse B. There's only in warehouse A. So let's see if we have any information about 267-4, 267-4. I think there was something in the email about this product. Let's go back there. 
no that was 267-1 i don't need the email anymore i did the inventory count let's look at the supplier report oh 267-4 let's take a look at this in december uh, in december year three the company acquired 10,000 units of SKU 267-4 at a price of $1.65 per unit. During the year, the company sold $58.98 to third parties. Okay, what you would do here, just kind of say, okay, say just, just, it's good to kind of see how they came up with the record, just to double check that the records is good. So if they if they purchased 10,000 unit and they sold, the record showing they sold $58.98, their perpetual inventory is correct, 4102, but why is when I did the count, um, there was only 4,098 units. It's still there's something's not right, okay? So so I know there's a discrepancy. And what you do here, just find the, the number if you're comfortable with this. So minus 4,098. So simply put, I there's four units. There's um, uh, There are four units uh, that unaccounted for. Okay, I need to, four, four unit missing. The last sale was made November 4th with the sh with, with shipment of that month. Okay, that doesn't help me, not much. Uh, let's see, uh, supplier report, we looked at it. Let's take a look at the memo from staff accountant. Let's see if there's anything about this one. Let, there's something about SKUs 26-4. I met with the controller on December 31st, year four, and this is um, Lily, the staff auditor, to resolve the discrepancy between the perpetual inventory listing and the count sheet prepared during the inventory observation. I then visited the warehouse again with the controller to, to perform a recount of these items. I counted 4,102. There was another count, and it matches the inventory. I validated that, that the perpetual inventory for SKU 26-4 was correct, and the initial count reflect uh, on the inventory was incorrect. So basically we did the second count and it worked by the staff auditor. So guess what? It is 4102, the inventory record showing 4102. Do we need to do anything? Absolutely not. 4102 is correct. This is how many units we have. The reason is error in the count. This is what happened. There were error in the count. We had to count it again. Good. Easy. Hex bolts. Well, let's start with the perpetual inventory system. Okay. Perpetual inventory system, and we'll get the SKU number as well because we need this. So the hex bolts, they're showing they have 9,878. Copy this number down. 90, no, I'm sorry, 9875. That's the perpetual, this, this is their accounting record. And the SKU is 561-3 because you're going to need this. Go to the inventory count and see how many they have. So 561-3, they have some in warehouse A, that's 49.75, they have some in warehouse B, 1950, make sure because they have two warehouses, you counted both. Now just add, add up those two and you want to compare them to the perpetual inventory just to kind of get an idea what's going on here. Um, 79.75 plus 19.50 that's equal to 99.25 99.25 now we're going to take the difference between this number and the perpetual inventory which is 98.75 minus 98.75 and there's there's a discrepancy of 50 unit so what we're saying is this when we did the count the the record is showing 9875 but when when we did the count it seems we have more we have 9925 9925 so we have 50 more units 50 more units for this 561-3 now we need to kind of learn what's going on what's going on in this uh, what's going on in this system basically okay so we should have more. That's okay. So 561-3. Okay, we take this one out. Email from the controller. Nothing in the email about this. Okay, nothing in the email. Uh, well, let's take a look. I mean, we learned something about the company from the email, but nothing in here. Supplier report. 
uh, 561-3. There's nothing in the supplier report. Perpetual inventory. We looked at memo from the staff. Memo from the staff was about the SKU uh, 267-4. Let's look at the warehouse map. At the warehouse map. Okay. We see that in the return area here, if you see the return area in warehouse B, there is hex bolt 561-3. There's some in the return area. Okay, so notice there's some in the return area. What does that mean? Well, it means there was some items returned to us and they're, in, they're sitting in the area. So there's a good chance, there's a good chance they're not in the system yet. So let's take a look at the email from the controller. I remember something about the, about the return area. Could you please tell me whether the items in the return area have been included in the count? Yes, the counts are correct and the return has been included in the count. However, they would not have been yet processed in the perpetual inventory system. So we did count them. So the count is correct. So the count, the 9925 is correct. But what happened is, so we did count them, but we did not update them in the inventory, perpetual inventory system because the inventory system only showing 98 75. What does that mean? It means we need to add 50 units at 1289. Okay, so we need to add here more. So we're going to get 50 units times, because we already know we, there's 50 unit times 12.89, and we're going to have to add 644.5, which is 645. So we're going to add 645 positive, except and the reason for this is error in the count, no error in the count, item consigned to company, no consignment, item pulled for sales order have not yet been processed, no nope. item ready for shipment, FOB, item ready for shipment, FOB, and misplacement of inventory in the warehouse, obsolescence, no, <laughs> return not yet processed in the perpetual inventory system, that's the correct answer. Okay. Now we have the total adjustment, which is negative 3098 which is less than the 5000 the performance materiality um, because we have to determine so based on our inventory based on our inventory work performed the inventory balance is materially misstated not really based on the inventory work performed the inventory balance is materially misstated because there, no based on the inventory work performed the inventory balance is not materially misstated because the required adjustments are less than the identifiable uh, audit no based on the met based on the inventory based on the inventory work performed the inventory balance is not materially misstated because the required adjustment are less than the performance materiality the performance materiality is 5000 so that is it's less we accept we accept and that's it so again notice here it's just it's if I gave you those questions, if I give my students those questions in a multiple choice, each one separately, it will not be as intimidating. But this looks intimidating because you have to look for the information in different places. So my goal is, my, my suggestion is, see what, what, what do they want you to do? What, what, what are they asking for? Look at the big picture. Then go back and start to scan the exhibit first to see what, where information is located. Then go back and start to work on each one separately. Although it looks intimidating, it's really not that intimidating. Um, I know on the exam day you're under pressure and that's why you have to familiarize yourself with those simulations. So on the exam day, you don't take any chances. You're more comfortable psychologically. So the screen is not, is not, is not threatening you. Once you know, I know this, once you know, I learned this, I just have to kind of sit down and look for it then it's not as intimidating. And get used to the calculator, get used to the Excel sheet, get used to the screen. That's what I would suggest the most, okay? And have confidence. Once again, this topic is, you know, inventory cycle. I have it heavily covered in my auditing and attestation course on YouTube, and I have more resources for you on my website. I strongly suggest you go visit, sign, sign up. You only study for your CPA once. It's a lifetime investment. Make it worth it. Good luck and study hard, and I'm always here to help.